All right, we can get started here. Um, <clears throat> welcome to uh, this month's Research Pays Off. I'm Ben Worrell, a mineral operation engineer. And a um, couple of housekeeping things before we get started. Uh, next month, I think we're moving to Skype instead of WebEx. Uh, Bob will be sending all that information out later. But I think this gives us some opportunities to get away from using phone lines, and just using the computer. And so that seems to work pretty well, uh, I, I believe. A little question on, um, I guess, an update on Minroad, um, Minnesota. It's been pretty cold. We're all excited about it for being cold, other than we've been in our houses for now about, it seems like, three weeks um, since mid-December. Uh, but we've seen some low temperatures, our PG grade. have gone below the minus 28 uh, one, one night at least, uh, but we have not seen any cracking out on our test sections. Uh, we have a lot of mineral that we built a couple years ago with NCAT. Uh, we've had some autonomous bus work going on at Minroad. Some of you might have seen that. Um, different news organizations have been following this. But this will be kind of interesting watching the autonomous bus work in snow and how it works in the cold. Um, batteries in cold, as you know, don't work very well. But it's interesting seeing how they've been figuring this out um, over the next few weeks. They'll be showing that off at the Super Bowl that hopefully the Vikings can get to. Um, the only work really going on in Minroad right now is we're doing some geotechnical work. We're measuring the different elevations, a couple of different test sections on the low line road, kind of looking at settlement, frost issues, things like that with the recycled bases and with the large stone base that we've been working with. Um, NWRA right now, the long term research contracts should all be almost up and going. If they're not, um, expect them all to be going come February. Uh, so that's great news. A lot of work's been done by all the different groups pulling that together. Uh, TRB, we had our winter meeting for NWRA. We had about 25 people in the room. We had some members and non-members, which was a pretty good deal. Um, and as NWRA was, um, people are pretty receptive of talking about it at the TRB. Um, so so sort of good progress in that area. But we also had that meeting online, so we had about 20 people on the phone, plus the 25 people in the room. So that worked out pretty well, just kind of giving an update on NWRA and where we're going with that. So today with our research pays off, um, <clears throat> kind of the format today is we're going to be talking about pavement preservation. And um, we have uh, different peoples on the panel along with Jerry Guide here that's in the room. But um, today we're going to have uh, Jerry Guide from MnDOT, um, Buzz Powell from NCAT, uh, then we're also going to have John Roberts with IGGA. And um, I guess, well, let me, let's do introductions real quick with the panelists that we have. Jerry, go ahead. Hi, I'm Jerry Guyb. I work with MnDOT in the uh, research operations side of our office materials and road research. And uh, maybe mention one thing as we start here, Ben and I were looking at a lot of the questions and they're all an awful lot of performance related things. So I guess I'd encourage everyone if, if you want to see how things work, you got to try them. So uh, go out and try it. All right, John, you want to give a little introduction? You bet. My name is John Roberts. I'm the director of the International Grooving and Grinding Association. And uh, I also serve as the director of the American Concrete Pavement Association's Pavement Preservation Partnership. We deal with all things concrete repair and preservation. And uh, glad to be here. Thanks for the invite. Yeah, thank you, John. Um, the last one, Buzz Paul, are you on the phone? Buzz is having trouble hooking up, so I guess we're going to have to start out with uh, Buzz to uh, start this out. But what um, Bob did was he sent out a questionnaire. And um, so he sent out a questionnaire with a number of um, people responded to that questionnaire with questions related to pavement, pavement preservation. And so we have the questions here. Bob, if you could bring some of those up. but. I guess the point here is to kind of have some of these, um, use these as a basis to start the conversation from, and then um, kind of use participation from the audience to see where this takes us. So this is the first time we're kind of going through with doing that. But for example, the first one of the first things maybe we talk about is um, 
you know, when should we place the seal coat? Um, does it make sense to do it at year one or not? So that's one thing that people have been asking quite a bit. And Jerry, you have any comments on that? Uh, sure, thanks, Ben. Uh, so as far as uh, some of the work we did in our pooled funds, if you want to stop aging of the pavement, then you need to put the chip seal down at you know year one uh, or, or after that first type of winter situation. Uh, some of the issues you get in with that are then how, how do you want to maintain the, the striping. So it's got to be a lot of different coordination uh, going on there. So year one is certainly uh, a good possibility that will prevent any future aging of your pavement, that new hot mix. Current MnDOT system also looks at distresses and other things. So uh, the, the pavement management system we use says if your pavement looks good and it's new, uh, wait till year seven to do it. So uh, that's where we, we get back to if you want to see how something's going to work, try it. But uh, the year one will prevent any more aging of your mix. I mean, has anyone found the actual years that I could save? I mean, that's been the hardest part with that is we know it stops aging, but what does it do for benefit for dollars? I just wish. Yeah, we, we look, but we did one aging study years ago and <coughs> over well, most of the life of the pavement, so we put down a chip seal at year one, two, three, four different pavements and even five, six, seven, and eight on a different type of pavement. And over the a long part of the, the life of those pavements, I'm going to say the performance was fairly similar as it got to the end of the pavement life, and we didn't track that research as tight or as close as maybe we should at the very end. I think there was a difference in performance, so a two or three year type of life extension. But that's, you know, year one to three, I don't know if you'd see a real big difference. Uh, uh, this is Pete Kemp.